Hello, my name is Rob Sandstrom and I'm here today at the Laguna shop and we're going to demonstrate how to cut a Moncala game. You may be familiar with the game. It's a game where you use little stones inside of pockets with the strategy being to try to achieve all the stones and then you win. So today, what we're going to do is use two different machines. The first machine we're going to use is the Laguna IQ CNC. And we'll use that to actually carve the game. And from there then we'll move on, once we have the game carved, we'll move on to a Laguna laser to engrave the Moncala emblem on the game. Today we're gonna to focus on building a Moncala board, a Moncala game board using a Vectric P Carve Pro. First thing we do is we want to create a new file and our board we're going to make need some hold down so I'm going to actually make it a 7.5 inches wide right now and I can adjust that down later by say 22.5 inches. Thickness will be about 0.75. Right now we will leave it in the middle so we can build everything centered and then before we actually put it on the table we might turn it back to a left bottom. We'll see how it goes and we'll be using, let's see what will we use. Let's do something like mahogany for now. Hit OK. Now I'm going to create the board. I'm going to create the upper half first and then I'll create the uh, bottom half by simply mirroring the upper half. So I need to start with the top board and the top board I want from a rectangle, let's go with that. I want to go from the lower left corner and I want to go 5.5 by 10.25 inches for the overall board to be. So the overall board will be 20.5 by 5.5 Hit enter. Now what I want to do is make a large pocket for the home spot on the Mancala game. So I'll start with an ellipse and I'm going to start here in the center and I want that ellipse to be 4.5 in the x direction, 4.5 by 2.0. It's easier for me to type in than to try to play with it. And then what I want to do is I want to take this ellipse and I want to move it down so it snaps in place or in the center and now I want it to be a half inch down from that spot right there so I use the move tool and Y position minus 0.5 hit enter we'll see how that looks when we're all said and done so now I need to make the individual pockets. There's three on this side and three on this side. So we'll start with a circle and we'll make the circle two inches in diameter. Hit apply. I want to move this a half inch and grab this. Once again, move it this way. And then now that it's snapped on that area, I'm going to move it to 0.5 inches. So now I know it's a half inch from there and I'll flip it horizontally, horizontally. Make sure that we flip about the job center and create a mirrored copy. That's why I've left everything centered, flip horizontal. And so now we know that these are a half inch from the edge. And let's take a look at the distance between them. and almost a half inch in between them. So it's very close. Hit close, and we want to get these all aligned. So I'm going to go ahead and use the offset tool. I want three rows, one column, three rows, because I'm going down in the Y direction, one column, and I want a half inch between each one like I did before. Hit copy. So we're now a half inch between each one. Now you can see the spacing we need to be coming up. So I would like to see how we do with a half inch let me move this up so it snaps in on here. And then I want it to be, I want these to move. See, they're all together. I want these to move up a half inch from there. I'm gonna move up in the positive direction, 0.5 inches. And so now I have 0.5 inches from this edge, 0.5 inches from this edge, 
0.5 inches from all these edges so we have a nice symmetry. The next thing is I want to create a nice rounded corner for each of these. So I'll use the fillet tool and I already entered a value once before of 0.5. I'm going to put 0.5. It'll be a normal fillet and I'll go around the board. So we have the nice shape of the fillet now. So now all we need to do is replicate this board for the other side. So we'll hit replicate. We're going to hit flip vertical about the job center, create a mirrored copy. And now we have both sides of our board. So if I take and move this up enough to where I can get a bit in between and move this one down enough to get a bit in between, we'll have plenty of space. See what we've got here for distance. So we've got 0.6 inches there. That's plenty for a quarter inch bit. But that's what we decide to use. So now that we've got the shape, it's time to set up the tool paths. One thing I like to do before actually creating my tool paths, I almost wouldn't create them without doing this, but is to put each of the cuts on their various layers. So I've got one called the outside profile, and if you look, everything is on that layer, because I originally started by making outside profile. I named it from layer one to outside profile. So now I'm going to make the other layers. So I want to take each of these pockets and put them on a layer called pocket. So I right click, move to a new layer. Those are my pockets. And I'll give those a color of blue. So now I have the two layers that I'm going to be working with on this file. When I cut this, I'm going to cut it so that first I do the pockets and then I'm going to cut it the outside profile. And when we get done putting it all together, there'll actually be a hinge, two hinges here. Uh, and one other thing I want to do is put in a place for magnets, I just realized, to be able to hold this closed. So let me put a couple magnets in. Magnets are 0.49 from my previous measurements on magnets. So I'll put 0.49 and I'm going to put that right here. And that should say 0.49. I need to redo it. I'm going to put that right in that location right there. And I'm going to move it just a little bit over. Then I'm going to do like we did before. I'm going to flip that horizontally around the center. And then I'm going to take those two so that we have a perfect match down here and I'm going to flip those vertically. So now when we close it, we will have all the magnets matching and we will have a nice positive closure with magnets. And I'm going to take each of those magnets, close, I'm going to take each of those magnets now and I'm going to move those to a layer called magnets. Let me make that a brown color. How's that? Okay, so now I have my magnets. Now I'll be have a hinges on the bottom here and then magnets to hold everything closed. Time to set up the tool paths. Tool paths are pretty simple, and there's two ways that we can create them. We can create it with either a bowl bit if you have that, or you can just use a regular ball nose. You could use an end mill, but it will give you square corners, and I like to have the bottoms of the pockets be a little rounded. I also like to add another little flare so that you have a nice rounding over here by using a roundover bit. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So the first bit I'm going to put on there is 
a round over bit, close this. I'm going to go to a profile path and I've already got my round over bit selected right here. And this is a quarter inch radius round over bit. And I put it right on the line and you have to play with this sometimes to get it just right. So I'll have to make a couple trial cuts to make sure this works. Sometimes the tool geometry is just a little off, but uh, for now, this is what the tool geometry is set up with. I go 0.2 inches deep on my round over. Each round over will be different, so you'll have to look at yours if you use a round over. And I don't need to do any separate last pass. I don't need to change anything over here. And I want to put this on a layer. So I'm going to select the closed vectors layer, associate with tool pass, and it's we're going to be for the pocket. So all of the pockets, you can see they've all been selected. We'll use this round over. We'll calculate it. And let's do a preview. You can see that it's doing a round over here on the edge. And now we'll go ahead and do the rest of the tool path. Now that we've completed the round over, let's go into the other tool pass for the pockets. And remember, there are two possibilities, one using a ball nose, one using a bowl bit. And so we'll talk about the ball nose first since most people would have that bit. So the first thing I do is I go do a pocket tool path and I want to go 0.5 inches deep. That gives me still 0.25 inches left on the bottom of the pocket. Select my ball nose. This is a ball nose. I'll show you how I would do it. Let me remove it here. Select, this is a quarter inch ball nose. That's a 3 16ths inch. Quarter inch should be fine. I select that. Also make sure that the percent of pass uh, step over is good. That's good. I can increase it a little bit for this, I think. I'm gonna go up to 10% and see how it looks. Hit okay. Offset tool path, starts from the center, comes out. I'll call this pockets. I'm going to select the layer that I want to use, closed vectors, associated with tool paths, pockets, hit close, hit calculate. And now that I've calculated, I will go ahead and preview what that looks like. So that's what our pockets are going to look like. Let's show you how the pockets look with a round over. Preview visible. You can see that adds a nice little finishing touch. And everything looks good. If we blow it up, look it around. And that's why we use the ball nose or a bowl bit uh, because we, we like this rounded area. And let's reset that preview. And now let's go with a bowl bit and see how that looks. Hit close, go back to Z, to 2D view. We're still gonna set up a pocket. And we're going to set up that pocket 0.5 inches, but instead of a ball nose, hit remove, we're going to select my bowl bit. Here's my bowl bits. This one is the bit that I want to use. It's a 7 16 inch bowl bit. It's got a pass up to 0.3125. I would prefer that to be 0.25 to take a little bit less out. So I'll change that though uh, in a second. Select. Now what I want to do is come over here. And I don't want to be quite as aggressive, so I'm going to change that pass step since it'll be two passes anyway to 0.25. Hit OK. And I'm going to use the offset. Oh, I forgot to look at the uh, step over. That step over 45% is way too much. I'm going to make that, say, 20% for this bit. Hit OK. And then we're going to use offset. This looks good. This looks good. We're going to go ahead and keep the pockets, close vector, close. And I'm going to put, so I know the difference, pocket, bowl. So I know it's a bowl bit. Calculate. And now let's take a look at how this looks. We're going to preview this path. And that looks pretty good. Let's do the round over. And I think that looks pretty good. And it would get up close, get close. So for the magnets, we're also going to want a pocket and we're going to only want to go 0.1 inches deep and we're going to use an end mill because we want a nice flat bottom for those. And we're going to use an upcut quarter inch end mill.
and everything looks good. Selector, associate with toolpath, magnet, unclick, everything else. And I'm going to put magnets, calculate. Let's preview that. All right, you can see our magnets. And the final toolpath is actually the cutting out of the board. And so now I'm going to go through and set up that toolpath at the profile toolpath. I want to go down to Z, which is the thickness of the board. I want to use a downcut bit. So this is a downcut quarter inch. Everything looks good. I do not want to be on it. I want to be to the outside right. I like to use this little wire frame here. And of course, we're going to need to add tabs. I like my tabs to be a quarter inch, 0.125. Let's edit the tabs. First, I got to select the layer. Select the layer, outside profile, edit tabs. It already put them there when I was doing a file earlier, so it knows where they're at, so I don't need to add any. Hit close. I like to add a little bit of a lead-in wrap, but not a lead in this case. Uh, I don't want to have to mess with clamps or anything. So I'm going to make that uh, twice as long as the diameter. And I'm going to say outside profile. Hit calculate. And hit preview visible. And now there's our board. Our magnet locations, our hinges will go right here. Everything's held nice and firm. And we're ready to go cut this and save the tool pass if, if we like. Now, we've got to remember one thing. Right now, we have got our Z0 at the surface. I would uh, leave it at the top because of that round over bit. Uh, you want to be very exact where you're zeroing off that round over bit or it will start to create some sanding challenges in the future. So I would leave it at the top. And the other thing is, I normally zero off the XY data point in the lower left. It's easier for me to see. I don't have to specially mark the board or anything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this for cutting purposes, that's my habit, to be at the lower left corner. So I'm gonna hit set. I'm gonna change this to the lower left corner. There's nothing to do above the models. Well, I don't have any actual models on here. The other thing to be aware of for clamping purposes Remember, this clearance bit, this clearance is how far above the board your bit's gonna go when it's going from one location to the next. And I actually recently damaged a clamp because I forgot about that. So make sure that your clearance is adequate to uh, go over any clamps or hold downs you have. I'll be using some side hold downs and maybe a, a screw or two, so I'm not worried about this, this is fine. I'm gonna hit OK. And it tells you that changing any of these settings means that all tool paths must be recalculated to ensure correct results. And so you hit yes. So now it's going through and it's recalculating all the tool paths based on starting from this lower level location. You can see all these red lines showing you the tool paths. I wanna go ahead and Reset preview and then go ahead and preview all the tool paths and see if it gives me what I like. It does and so everything looks good. So now I'll go ahead and save these tool paths to my thumb drive. By the way, the overall time for this total with the ball nose, 28 minutes, scale factor of one. Total with the bowl bit, scale factor of one is 11 minutes. We'll see what we actually get and it will can Pair that to the uh, timing on the controller when we go to cut this. In this video, one of the things we wanted to demonstrate is how you can use the combination of your CNC and your laser to, for some uh, really uh, cool projects. And so we're going to do that at this time. So we've already uh, done all the tool paths. We've saved it to the USB drive off screen. I didn't bother to do that on screen. I will say the one thing to remember about when you're saving your tool paths, uh, let's go over here. Uh, and we'll just take 
we'll just take uh, this outside tool path is remember to select the right post processor right here for your Laguna machine. As we move forward with the project, we're gonna be using three different bits today. One bit is a round over bit, which looks like this. And that'll be to round over the edges of the pockets. The other bit we'll use is a bowl bit, which you see I've already inserted and I've put at the X, Y, zero point, and I'll show how I did that in a minute. And now we'll actually cut the bowls. And the third bit will be a compression bit that I used to cut out the game. And we typically use a compression bit whenever we're doing cutout profiles on the side because there's an up cut on the bottom and a down cut on the top and it allows for the cleanest cuts with, with the least tear out. If you've finished watching the video where I describe how to do this in the software, you'll see we have another choice we could use for the bowls and that's this bit here. It's a regular ball nose bit. The difference between a ball nose bit and a bowl bit is the bowl bit is specifically designed for creating bowls and the head is larger. Therefore, you can be more efficient with the cut of your bit. So I demonstrate both bits in the video because many people will already have a ball nose and they may not have a, a bowl bit. So I wanted to make sure you had the option for either one depending on what bits you have available. First thing we want to do on any project is to make sure that our XY zero is in the correct spot. I did that before videoing, but all I did was you come to the corner, I have set up the XY datum point for the far the bottom left corner. So I came to the left corner and I made sure the center of that bit was located on this corner by moving the X and the Y axis to get where I needed. And once, once I got to that location, I hit the X, Y, zero button. The next thing we want to do is make sure that we're zeroed off the top of the material. In this case, it's very critical to make sure that we zero exactly off the top of the material, and we want to make sure our material is very flat. In most cases, it's not as critical because we're not using a roundover bit. And for this bowl bit, it's not quite as critical. But when we move over to the roundover bit, being exactly on the top surface is critical because if not, then your bit may go too deep, and if it goes too deep, you'll get a ridge that you'll have to spend extra time sanding off or planing off because the bit is too deep. If it's not deep enough, you really won't get the full benefit of using the roundover bit. So the zeroing on the top is very critical for the roundover. If you reflect back on the video, you'll note that I in my cutting sequence, I actually used the roundover bit first. And that was my intent. But after doing some test cuts, I found that the roundover bit had a tendency in some cases to have a little tear out occasionally. And because of that, I experimented, around, uh, experimented and I talked to the bit manufacturer and it was suggested that I actually use the bowl bit first and then change from a a uh, climb cut to a conventional cut when I'm making the cut. So there's a slight difference in how you see me approaching the actual cuts than what, than what was in the video. So I'm in the material, I'm coming down on the Z, and I get close. This is the old paper method. And now I'm gonna go to the high, low setting you can see it says low here, and that changes it so that I'm not going down in as large as steps. So I'm going down in 0.1 steps. Gives me the finest control. And you see I'm moving the paper, and now I can feel it dragging. Now that it's dragging, 
I'll hit Z0 and I'll come up. I'll go back to high low and you'll notice that I'm now, oops, go back to high low, says fast now, and now when I go up, you'll see I go up in 0.5 increments versus 0.1. So now I've got the XY zero and I've got the Z zero set for this cut. The next thing you might want to do, not, re not necessary, is to check the actual time it's going to take to cut this toolpath so you have a good idea. The software gives you an estimated time, but now you can actually check what the G-code says it's going to do on this machine. So the way we do that is we go to the menu button, we go down to where it says operate file using the X plus and X minus key moving up and down the menu. We hit OK. We come down using the X minus button to say check pro time. Once we're on the check pro time, we hit OK. We're on the U disk file, the USB file that's in there. We're going to hit OK. Then we're going to go look for the file that we're going to run. In this case, I'm going to run the bowl bit toolpath. I hit OK. And you can see it's going to take zero hours, 25 minutes, and 44 seconds. And my experience with this is this is a very accurate estimate because it's actually running the G code that, the, that will be running the machine. Now that we have everything set up for the cut, XY0, Z0, and we know how much time it's going to take, the next thing we need to think about is where we expect this bowl to go. As we hit run and we go through this process, we're going to watch this bowl bit go to where we think it's supposed to go, which is here in the center. So if it starts to go off to the left or off to the right or somewhere different, then we know to hit stop on the machine. We always have to be thinking about where the bit is expected to go because if we made a mistake with how we set up our XY datum point, our Z0, or anything else, the machine can do something different than what we expect. And that's our first sign that we need to go back and check how we set everything up. With that, we'll go ahead and start the process of running the toolpath. The spindle has already been set up to uh, zero on the XY axis down here on the lower left corner previously. Uh, I demonstrated that a few minutes ago. Now, one of the things you'll notice between when I demonstrated the XY zero and now, if you look closely, is the way the material is actually fastened to the CNC bed. As we looked at the material and the way it was fastened, it looked like it had the potential for slipping by having that little block here and a split block over here. So we re-examined how we were holding the material and we've now put the material in a more secure manner. So as you can see now, we've got clamps all the way along the length and a hard fence all the way down the left side. We also added a couple extra double-sided tapes on the bottom. So this thing is not going to move at all and we felt like we needed to make that change to have this cut be just the way we wanted to. So now that we've got the XY0 in the left corner, the next point is to actually zero the bowl bit off the top of the material. So we'll do that at this time. So I lower it down close to where I want it. It's going down 0.5 millimeters at that time. I switch over to the lower speed where it goes down 0.1 millimeter and I slowly lower until my piece of paper starts to get a drag. Right there. 
So we got a little drag right there. If I try to pull it, it will tip, uh, rip the paper. So I'll go ahead and put the Z zero and we'll come up. And we now have the machine zero to the top of the bed. The next step is to go ahead and start the machine. So I'll first start the dust collector, then I'll start the machine and recall it's important that you always monitor the bit when it starts out, that it's doing the things you expect it to do. In this case, I expect it to start with a circular hole in this area. If it starts to go off to the left or the right or in another direction, then we know that that's a problem. So we'll want to make sure that it doesn't do that. We've just finished the bowl bit. Now it's time to go ahead and switch over to the round over. I've already changed it in the spindle. And now I'm going to go ahead and zero it. Remember, it's critical that this gets zeroed right on the top. Otherwise, you'll end up with it going too deep and have a more sanding that you have to do to get uh, a little ridge or lip out of it. Switch to uh, low. Okay, that's it right there. Turn on the dust collector. We've just completed the uh, round over and uh, you'll see a couple fuzzies here and there and uh, sometimes uh, if the wood isn't exactly 100% flat, like right back here and right here you'll see a little tiny ridge and a little sanding on top and in the bowls is going to take care of that just fine and you'll see that at the end when we're done with the project. We've just completed the round over bit, now we're going to change from that bit to a compression bit and this bit is going to do two things for us. It's going to put magnets in each of the corners for holding the Mancala board closed after we finish putting it together with the hinges and so forth and the other thing it's going to do is cut out the Mancala board from the rest of the board.
Once again, we need to zero the bit. Okay, we'll start the dust collector. First do the magnet tool path and then I'll switch over to the cutout. The next step in this process is to go ahead and cut the Moncala boards loose so that we actually have where they are located, uh, have them as individual pieces. And remember we've got the two-sided tape down there so I need to pull it up. And then I will turn it over here and knock out some of the sawdust. Actually I'll turn on the dust collector for a second. I like to turn it over and get it from this end, use a multi-tool, and now I'm going to cut the little tabs. You could also use a hand flush trim saw if you wanted. But I come from the Tim Taylor School why well, use a hand tool when I can use power? Arr, arr, arr. A little bit of sanding, uh, some magnets and some hinges, and we'll have a Moncala board. But as we think about it, the next thing we actually want to do is put a little decoration on it. So what we're going to do next is I'll take one side and I'm going to engrave Moncala across the top of it using our Laguna laser. Show you how simple it is to actually engrave something on a product you already cut or produced. One of the things we'd like to do is show how we could combine the laser and the CNC together. And the laser would do a perfect job of engraving the word Moncala on the, on the top of this board. And if you wanted, you could actually, on the bottom of the other one, you could actually engrave a name or a gift or something else. For now, we're just going to do man call on the top. So to do that, the first thing we want to do is select the vector, which is the bounding vector we're going to want to use in Lightburn to put the word in with, and export it. So we select the vector, we hit export as an SVG. Lightburn will read that. Maguna Moncala SVG. Save. So I know that's the profile. And I have that saved, and now I can open up Lightburn. I've opened up Lightburn, and now I'm going to import. So here's the file. Hit open. And I like to, I like to actually do this uh, rotated, so I'm going to scroll my mouse up, and I'm going to use the, the period key and rotate this thing 90 degrees, and I'm going to center this in the middle of the page to make sure it's centered. And now what I want to do is I want to type in my text, Mancala. So I'll come to the text tool. I'm going to select a text that I like for these Mancala games called African text. Place the text here, M-A-N-C-A-L-A. -A -A. And I want that to be bigger. 
I want to select it and then I want to center it in the middle of the page so that it's centered inside of this rectangle. And that looks pretty, pretty good. I might make it just a little bigger. There we go. So I need to put these on different layers because I like a fill plus a line. This, we will make a fill, and I like it fill plus line. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm actually going to take that outside one, and I'm going to, forgot I'm gonna make that a, I'm gonna put that on a tool frame. It's not going to be at all. So I wanna see it, but I'm not even gonna frame it. And now, let's see what that looks like. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll use the settings that I typically would use. 435 and 30, and then line after fill would be more like um, 320 and 15, if okay. And we'll see how that burns. I'm gonna make a couple trial cuts off screen just to make sure those settings are correct. And now we're set to actually take this to the laser. So we'll save this file, and then we'll go to the laser. Now it's time to go engrave. We're now at one of Laguna's laser. This is the Laser EX, and we're going to engrave Moncala on top of the game as a nice touch. I put it on one side because that tells me which side is the top of the Moncala game when I'm opening it up. So we'll start right now with the first thing we want to do is make sure that the game board is up and in a place where it's straight, so the uh, name will actually engrave straight. So we come over here to this, and the first thing I do is put the laser dot right on the edge of one side of the board. Then I move the laser over to the other side of the board, and if it's straight, then the board, the laser should be in the same spot. In this case, I looked like I had to move it up just a tiniest hair. So we'll test one more time. So that looks like the laser is in the right location and I'll make the dot just a little smaller for more accuracy. I put an X right in the center of this board. Come over that X All right, now we're over the X, which tells me I'm in the center of the board. We saved the file on a USB drive that's plugged into the port right here on the uh, Laguna. First thing we do is hit the file button, and we need to go over and look at the U disk. Hit enter now that we're on the U disk right there. Hit read U disk file. And that's the file we're looking for, Moncala. So we hit enter. And we hit copy to memory, hit enter. And now it's going to copy it to the memory. And We'll go out of the memory now by hitting escape. And you can see we have Moncala on the top of the memory board. So the next thing we do is we see that we've got Moncala over here and we're going to start to cut in just a second. But the first thing I want to do is frame it to make sure that where I think I have it centered and how it's going to cut is in the right location. So now that I'm in the center of the material, I need to make that the origin for the job since I set up the light burn software so it would start from its current position. So now I'm going to hit origin and now the machine knows that's the origin. So I need to find the file. I've already transferred the file into the memory and so now I'm going to open the file. It's a Mancala file. I see that's the file it's got. I'm going to hit enter. And now that I've got the file loaded and I don't want to make any changes to the burn set points or anything else, I'll go ahead and frame it 
to make sure it's in the location I think it is. So that's centered exactly the way I want it to, to be. The next step is to actually use the laser and engrave. To do that, we've got the file loaded, we've framed it, everything is in the right location, and we're going to hit start, and the machine will start. Thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure doing this project for you. It was really fun using both machines, the Lacuna IQ and the laser, to uh, give you an end product that I think is something that anybody would be proud of. If you would like a file for yourself to make this Moncala board yourself, it will be available and uh, you can download it and cut your own Moncala board. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to stay up to date on future videos. If you have any ideas on things you would like to see, please let us know in the comments section. Thank you and have a terrific day.